All right, today we're gonna to talk about how to dial in a part. You may have a part that you've built and it may come back from the customer or whatever, and maybe they've beat up the outsides of it, or maybe it wasn't an important part, it just had sawed edges on it here. And so when you picked up for your G54, which we talked about in the last video, uh, it didn't, it didn't you, now you can't pick it up again because it's not in the same place. And you wanna make sure that what you have in here for configuration is gonna match maybe whatever modification they would need to do to revision. So you say, well, how am I gonna pick this up? The outside edges are all beat up. What am I gonna do? Well, we can use an indicator, and this is a standard indicator, dial indicator, moves. Each one of these lines on here is a half a thousandth and a thousandth. But when it's on the back side, then you gotta use a mirror. Try and see what's going on back there, okay? So we're not gonna do that today. You may have to do that. Not everybody has a coaxial indicator like I'm so fortunate to have. So we're gonna take this one out. I'm gonna lay it on the table. Don't make a habit of laying tools on the table. You forget them, whatever. Next thing you know, you got cooling on your indicator or it's dinged up or it's falled off on the bottom of the machine. So I'm gonna set it here just because we're not gonna be doing anything intense. <clears throat> but we're gonna use a coaxial indicator today. That, while it's rotating, it's gonna look right at me. So we're gonna put this in the spindle. As you notice, I got the drive dogs kind of facing toward me so that, now, I bring this around, I'm gonna bring it down. I've got a hole in the middle of this part, a circular pocket that we're gonna dial in. So I'm gonna go in the hand jog. I'm gonna go in a 10 thousandths a click, and I'm gonna bring it down in the Z. Make sure you're in Z here. Okay, so we're gonna come on down. Now when you bring this down, this needle here has to be touching the wall by a little bit. So you're gonna get a little bit of needle movement like this. If you don't get that, you know you got a problem. Now I got a problem already. Let me move this up a little bit. There we go. I had no room to move my indicator. So make sure you don't have trouble with your stuff make sure it's working right before you start all right so we're gonna bring this down some more now and I'm gonna talk about that needle again <clears throat> so as you can see with the coaxial as I go around that just stays facing me so sometimes it's worth the investment but when you're coming around you want to first eyeball it to the top of the hole make sure that you're kind of swinging online because if you're way back here you know and and then you know you're not going to get in there. You got to have to get this needle down in the hole. I see what my problem is. Down in the hole without smashing it. But you can't have it where it's not touching. I've had it where guys have spun it around and said, oh, it's dialed in perfectly. I'm like, well, it's not touching anything. So yeah, it dialed in air perfectly. So here we go. I'm going to bring it down inside the hole now, carefully, because I got a bottom. I don't want to smash it on there. All right. I'm going to bring it up in Y now until I get it to start touching. I'm going to move to a thousandth, 0 0.001 per click, because I don't want to be cracking that in there. This is over $200 indicator here. So I'm going to walk it forward in Y. Okay, I'm just starting. I'm going to be able to rotate this dial. I'm just starting to get some what I would call interference or touch to the needle. Okay, so we're going to rotate it around. I amazingly got that closer to center than I thought. So on the back side, if we look at it here, we're about seven thousandths past my zero on the back of the Y. Do one axis at a time. Don't try and do your X and Y at the same time. It's, I'd be like, I don't trying to park your car and get the suitcase out of the back seat at the same time or whatever, you're gonna crash probably. So you're just gonna drive yourself crazy trying to get one done. So we're looking at the Y right now. The back is the Y, the front is the Y. I bring it back around to the front and I'm about zero. Sometimes you gotta reach up in there and make it hold still. So it's about zero, so I'm seven thousandths difference. Don't move seven thousandths, move half of that. So we're gonna move, we're gonna cause some more interruption on here. Since I'm not touching hard on the front, 
I know I need to bring the indicator this way, which is Y negative. So I, because I'm moving it into alignment with that hole. So I'm going to move it about three thousandths. Okay. I like to re-zero my indicator every time. Now I'm zeroed. So if I walk that around now, don't worry about how much that needle's moving. That's checking the X. Let's see what it gets, what it's like when it gets to the back again. Boy, that's pretty darn close right there. We're going to leave it at that. Now we're going to mess with the X. On this side, since it's already gone all the way over here, we have no interference. So I'm going to switch to X. I'm going to start walking my indicator that way, which would be an X positive move. So I'm going to start rotating this to the positive. And I know zero is going to be pretty close to where the center is at, so I'm going to go for zero. There's zero. This may screw up your Y, but you're, now you're kind of getting it in closer, closer, closer. So there, I get that to zero. Now my Y is off a little bit. Don't worry about Y now. You're working on X. And there's X. So that's a little off. We're going to go one more to the positive. Walk it around again. This Y is at one over zero. Let's adjust it. One over zero. And this, I mean, it's X. And this is the X is at about zero to about zero. So now my X is correct. But now my Y is a little screwed up, but we're closer than we were. So now the Y on the front's a little heavy. I'm going to walk it back a couple thou like that. Oh, now see, I just screwed up. I just forgot to change my X to a Y. Watch John make mistakes. All right, so I think we got our X back. Okay, our X is back again. Go to Y. There. Now, come around here. I'm going to back it up a little bit to there. Okay, so that runs about one over the zero all the way around. So now I know that spindle center is on a dead center of that hole. So that spindle center is dead center of that hole right now. So if I take my print and I look at my print, from the center of that hole over to the edge is 1.125. So, and from the Y up to the back edge is one inch. So I can go over here on my offset screen, get on G54, because this is calling out a G54. Now, I can hit part zero set twice right here, here and here. But now let's set the center of the hole as G54. We know that's not right. So we're going to come back over here. We need to move a negative 1.125 in the X. So I'm just going to hit negative 1.125. I'm going to hit right enter. Change that number. Now move over one. I need to move a positive. Because remember, your spindle is always what's moving. I'm moving to move a positive in the Y. So if I go in the Y and I hit 1.00, right enter. Now I'm at that. So now that should be in the right spot. Never trust yourself. That's how scrap parts get made. So let's go to Z. Let's walk it up out of there carefully. We're going to really walk it up now. We take this out. Be careful with your indicators. They're expensive. And I'm going to get a sharp tool. So I got this tap. Nice sharp point on the end of it. Put it in there. So now we're going to do the little old custom program we've talked about. We're going to go to MDI, manual data input. I'm the little man putting data in. All right, manual data input. Erase what we have. G00, rapid, G90, absolute, absolute movement, not incremental. G54, work coordinate system or work offset number one. X0 point, zero distance from there, Y0 point, zero distance from there. And then I go from my input screen up to my MDI. It's in there. Slow down my rapid a little bit, push the button. Okay, so it moved to what it calls G54. Hand jog, Z, boom.
You may not be able to see it that well from there, but that point of that tool is sitting dead on the corner of that piece. Or and if it's off a little bit, that's probably the distance between the saw cut and what we did the first time. So I have picked up this, reestablished my G54. Whatever revision or modification I need to make to this piece, it will be in complete orientation to the original milling that we did and drilling that we did. All right, so that's good. So what if you get a piece in and this is all beat up and they need you to remachine that, <coughs> excuse me, and this insert, this maybe goes into another tool, but it's all beat up. And you're like, well, I got to weld all that up. How am I going to know where I'm at now? <coughs> well, on this piece, fortunately for us, we'll consider it to be an insert that went in a pocket. So the outside's all beautiful now. The inside's all messed up, let's say. And take this out. Again, I'm laying tools here so we can see what we're doing, but don't do that as a habit. So I'm going to take this coaxial indicator again, put it back in there. Okay. So now we're going to swing in, we're going to swing in the part. You could call it dialing in the part or swinging it because we're actually going to use the indicator and swing it. Okay. So I'm going to swing this side and then I'm going to swing this side and we're going to come to the middle. So we'll know where we're at. So I'm going to go into hand jog, going to go into X, going to move over here. And I'm doing this with a coaxial. I normally wouldn't use a coaxial for this function, but so we can camera shot it easier, I'm going to use a coaxial. So we're going to walk it over here. Get a little more Y on it. Okay. Now, this is going to be a little different because this is going to want to dance around on me. So I'm going to try and put that right in between there so it doesn't dance around so much okay so i can should be able to swing it as you can see it's so i'm going to move that till it hits to zero x clicking it over a little bit uh, a little more we're going to just sneak it in now okay so so that side pretty much at zero on the dial. I could probably move it over just a little bit more. The old tool maker enemy's coming out now. There it is. So zero right there on the dial. So we know that's the edge. So we're going to come over here. Now on our distance to go, we can hit MDI hand jog. Now I'm zeroed right there. Okay. Going to move it up in Z. Now this is where you don't want to change you don't want to move the needle on this dial like start adjusting it because you lose everything then. So I'm going to come around to the other side. We're going to have to do a little adjustments here as we go because like I said, I normally don't use a coaxial with this for just, for just this reason because it kind of gets complicated. But it'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, move X. I'm going to move back over to the part. I'm going to move this. <coughs> If I can, sorry, it's probably driving the camera guys crazy right now. So I'm going to put that on the part and see where I'm at here. All right, not, not quite at zero. So let's move it over X, sneak it over just a little bit there. See what that says. Okay. So now that reads. Not quite right. Okay, so now that reads about zero on that side. So I've swung zero here and I've swung zero here. Big deal, right? Okay. If I look at this, 3.232. 3.232 is the distance from when I swung it here to where I swung it there. Move it up in Z. Well, half of 232 is what? 116. Half of three is inch and a half. So I'm one inch, 616 to the middle. So if I take X now and move that, one inch, one inch, 616. Now the, now don't look at this part. That's not real. Now the spindle is sitting 
directly over the center of this piece right there, okay? So now, like I did before, I can go to offset. I can hit part zero set in my X, because that's all I've done so far. And I need to move that 1.125 negative. Let's come back over here. Negative 1.125, right enter. Now, I moved it right back over to where it's going to touch on this, okay? So, we can do the same thing with Y. We can come back and swing this edge. We can swing this edge just like we did with the X. Zero it on here, come over here, take it till it's zero there. Read what the difference in our readout is here and put it right back to the center. Now I've swung it in in Y, I've swung it in. So I swung in the X, I swung in the Y, and I can move right back over to where that's at. So that's if you got a beat up part in the middle, but good edges on the outside. That's two things we've covered. We've covered swinging in a circle, because the outside might be beat up, or when we covered swinging in a block, because the inside might have been welded or need a revision or something to it. But what about, if you have a square? Let's just pretend this circle's not in here, okay? So, I've got a square in my part now, and, and the outside is saw cut edges. Well, what in the heck am I gonna do with that? All right, well it's very similar to swinging in a block. I'm gonna put that in to the spindle, or into the vise I mean. Like that. Now, we're gonna swing in these two sides just like we did, probably do the Y also on this one. So I'm gonna come down in Z. Now some people will take and they will move, if this is a perfect square, which this is, they will take and they will move this needle till it's swinging a circle in there, so it touches here, 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 and here, and all even, all even at the same time. Uh, you can do that. What if you're swinging in a square that big? I don't think I've got an indicator with a needle that long on it. So. I mean, maybe you're a tool maker and you made some funky redneck setup like I have, but normally you're gonna do this. So if you're dealing with a big square, you don't have to mess with it. I go back into X now, I move it over. Oh, gotta go down a little bit. Always make sure you're down inside and don't come down on it. If you come down on it, make sure that you've pushed it away like this so that you don't crunch this needle on top of your part. It's not a good day. Half your paycheck's gone buying a new indicator now. So, we're gonna walk that over. I'm in Z, I wanna make sure I'm in X. Walk that over again. Come on. There, start seeing the needle start to move. <clears throat> I'm gonna just put my finger against it here. I'm swinging that in now, and I'm not zeroed yet. So we're gonna go a little bit more. Let's put my finger on it there. Yep, still not there. Don't get too aggressive. Okay. It's like moving a couch. There we go. So, that's zeroed on that side. I'm gonna go right back over here like we did. I'm gonna go MDI, hand jog. I have zeroed out my distance to go. <clears throat> so we're gonna bring it right around to the other side now. I'm gonna walk it back over that way. I'm gonna look for that zero now. Oh, once in a while you get lucky. Even a blind dog finds a boat once in a while, right? So there it is. So that's zero on that side. What do I have? 515, 257 and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna move back. Half of 515 is 257.5. All right, so X, let's walk back over here. Go to tenths, if you're picky like me. 257 and a half. That puts me directly in the center of this square right now. So, let's go to Y. Well, I'm actually, now that I'm in the middle, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna go to offset, down here, that's my X, part zero set, boom. Now I'm right on the middle of that block. So, we're gonna go to Y, 
Rotate this toward the back now. Why? Make sure I'm in Y. Rotate to this to the back. Oh, I'm in tense. Machining is intense, isn't it? <clears throat> That's a bad joke, but oh well. Send me your better ones. And we're about, looks like we got her about zero there. I'm going to move it just a wee bit off the Y here, negative. Okay. Pretty close. So that's pretty close on the back side. So let's go to MDI, hand jog. I've zeroed out my distance now. <clears throat> so we're going to come around to the front. Kind of falling in love with this coaxial indicator right now. See where we're at. About a thou to go. There's a zero. Okay, so now. I've got it zeroed that way. What do I got here? 514 and 3 tenths. Well, that's pretty close to a square, isn't it? Pretty close to a square. All right. So 514, 257, and we'll say 2 tenths. I'll be off by a tenth. All right. So Y, 1,000, going plus. Way too much. 257. Two, two, not four, there we go. So two, so that's where I'm at. If I hit part zero set, whoop, get back in the offset here. Part zero set, boom. Now, I am on the center of this block. We're gonna pretend that's the G54 on this one. If not, I could move over and figure out where it's at. I don't have the print for this block in front of me right now, so I'm not sure where the G54 is at. We're gonna treat it like it's in the middle. This is also could be used if you're picking up a block raw block even, and they say put the G54 or home right in the middle. You can do what I did on that first block. You can swing the outside and this outside. doesn't matter if it's this big or this big. As long as you swing it in, in the middle, you're good. So you have zeroed this out, set your G54 directly in the middle. I don't care if it's the size of a Volkswagen bus, if you can reach both sides of it and swing it in, you can find the middle. All right, so we've dialed in a circle, we've dialed in a square, and we've dialed in or swung in the outside of a block. Thanks. Mm -hmm.